Welcome back to another day in the market and take a look at this drawing that I drew um, some couple days ago, maybe a couple weeks ago by now. Um, actually drew something up even earlier before when we ori originally had this uh, downturn right here back in late September. And I, to be honest, I did not expect the um, price action to follow my drawing quite accurately or quite as accurately really the point i was just trying to make is that we're probably due for another significant leg up once we bounce off of or once we hit this market bias indicator because this market bias indicator right here generally acts pretty consistently as either a support or a resistance so we got some action down here we did consolidate and even before um, when I drew this line and we had this day right here um, on the 28th of September and then also the 29th of September where we shot up on the 28th and then kind of got rejected um, on the 29th I, I said you know even my drawing right here that might have just been it um, and we we're kind of waiting to see if we were going to consolidate or just blast right through this market bias indicator and even if we would have uh, blasted through it it probably would have still just tested it on the other side as a resistance before going down um now for the rest of this drawing who knows what's going to happen um it's just going to be really interesting to see but what i really love about this is that we are now um, more or less getting just to the fair value on the daily um, for the S&P 500. Um, it was just so overbought and you know, it, you had things like Nvidia where it still is, but we're getting closer. Um, you know, just the S&P 500, Nvidia, TQQQ, all of these are regular QQQ as well if you wanted. We're just, they had all signs that we were in a bull market, but it was so overvalued that you didn't know when this little bubble was going to pop or if it was going to turn into a big bubble. Um, so it just was tough. It was tough to say get in. Uh, it was tough to say short. And now we're finally, once again, if you go back to the S&P 500, we're finally on the daily kind of starting to do um, a bounce up and then coming down. So Moving forward, what are we looking at? You know, the nature of the economy um, and the Fed. Well, we have um, some of the big guys in the real estate industry are sending messages to Jerome Powell to start easing up um, on the interest rates because they are afraid that it is going to be a soft landing turning into a hard landing. Um, now, Keep in mind, they have a vested interest to always have lower interest rates, more or less, right? I could imagine an environment where they would want rates to maybe go higher. But nonetheless, real estate agents, brokers, uh, loan officers, they all get paid when there's lower interest rates. So keep that in mind. Um, but with that said, they, they haven't talked too much, um, you know, publicly until about now. Um, Jer Jerome Powell and the Fed are maybe debating another rate or two or rate hike or two. I do not see two, although obviously anything could happen. I see maybe one or pausing um, and just letting it kind of ride out for uh, about a quarter or two going into 2024 before they start lowering them back down. It'll be interesting to see what lowering them back down, uh, what rate that would be. Um, because, you know, is it going to be just 25 and then hold and then another 25 and then hold? Is it going to be another 50 basis points? Obviously, the more aggressive of lowering the interest rates, the more people are going to start jumping on to um, basically buying houses and buying real estate. And that has a huge effect on inflation um, because that is probably the biggest purchase anyone's ever going to make in their lifetime. So it obviously drastically affects inflation with oil still on the rise. And now with the conflict over with Israel and Palestine, 
Um, not only does that cause more consumption of oil in that area of the region, but it also tightens things up politically um, and internationally and on a global economic scale. So with uh, oil, you know, continuing to be on the rise or continuing to be high, that is just going to keep all goods and services up. Um, and that unfortunately is going to hurt inflation. Now you can see inflation right here on um, trading view. Now you have to go to a monthly and I mean, for the most part, um, indicators aren't going to be as reliable here um, as, you know, just a normal stock ticker. So um, just kind of ignore those for a little bit. Um, this was the beginning of the pandemic when everything started to shut down. We started rising. We peaked in June of 2022, and we've been on a steady decline ever since then until about June of 2023. So we had about a year. And then as of August, um, which is the latest that um, TradingView has plotted right now, um, we actually went up slightly. So we went from about 3.3, or I'm sorry, 3.03 to about 3.6. So um, almost about a half a point, which can be pretty significant. Um, you know, we're talking about a little bit of a percentage here, percentage there, but you got to remember 10% of inflation of 2022, for example, and then a 3% inflation in 2023 does not mean that we decreased prices by 7%. What that means is we went up 10% of costs of everything across the board, 10% last year. Um, and then on top of that, we only increased inflation again, an additional 3%. Um, so that's something to keep in mind that the pain isn't going to go away of inflation. What we want is a stabilized economy um, and just getting prices under control. Now here shows the largest year over year cuts in asking a rent um, as of September of 2023. Uh, you can see all across the board, board Boise, Idaho, down 6.2%. Austin, down 5.6%, which is pretty significant considering Austin has just been um, booming in the past couple of years. Um, you have Port Portland, who has um, also boomed in the past couple of decades, actually down 2.9%. Um, and none of these uh, are, are really in one particular area or not. Now, my particular market um, is doing quite well, actually, um, geographically, because I'm close to water. Um, and by water, that definitely has an effect. You know, Boise, Idaho, there's a lot of area to expand out of. Um, even in Las Vegas with Nevada, just a lot of land to work with. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, San Francisco, you know, historically has been hot. It's cooling off. Nashville historically has been hot. It's cooled off a little bit. So, um, you know, Portland again to go back to Florida, Orlando down 3.5%. So this is showing that the interest rates are starting to take effect. Um, have we seen it necessarily in individual housing prices? Not, not too significantly, a little bit. Um, there is a little bit, but it's more so what I think is the beginning of what we're going to see, which is why I believe um, some people in the real estate sector is kind of warning the Fed to slow down a little bit. And just another little quick thing, uh, just bureaucracy doing bureaucracy things. New challenge for apartment developers, permits taking even longer. September of 2023 up significantly last time. It was even close to being this high was September of 2022, um, but it clearly is an outlier compared to all of these previous months. And you can see this here, apartment demand is normalizing in 2023, so that is actually a good thing. Um, you want it to sort of, uh, sort of normalize as far as inflation is going and as far as the interest rates are going. Um, Obviously, if you're in um, a, a big real estate developer, you want to keep these rents high, um, but hopefully uh, materials are also going down for you and that is thus allowing you to lower your rents.
So it's always good to get a good visual of the interest rates. Um, you know, keep in mind historically, uh, you know, this chart goes back all the way to 1971. We have had a steady decline um, in interest rates for decades, decades and decades at this point. We have had a huge increase in interest rates right now. One of the largest increase increases in decades. Um, there's a lot of chatter with people out there saying that they don't see it ever getting back down to 3%. Um, I really, really disagree with that. I mean, in 2019, when we sort of had some sort of inflation scare, um, obviously not as significant as COVID, we were at 2.69%. And that was a high um, you know, there's periods of time after the Great Recession, after the dot-com bubble, there's always going to be something now. It's COVID, right? Um, everyone always says, we're never going to see those rates again. Well, no, that's not true because this is a common tool that the Fed often uses and will continue to use in the future um, to stabilize the economy. So interest rates are high right now. Uh, because they're trying to fight inflation. So keep that in mind. You know, it's it, you hear this and you're like, duh. But then, you know, you go to buy a house and you're like, oh, it's a good deal. But that interest rate, oh, that interest rate, I'm never going to see 3% again. So why should I buy this? No, you're going to. Um, if it's a good deal, it's a good deal. Uh, the common saying is marry the price and date the interest rate. End of story. Always go by that because you will be able to refinance, keep your credit up, um, pay ahead uh, um, on your mortgage if you can, especially if you have a low interest rate. Well, actually, I should say the opposite, especially if you have a high interest rate. Uh, but lower interest rate generally means a lower payment, which means you can pay ahead. That's kind of what I meant there. So um, just let's just get back to, let's just go through Bitcoin. Uh, we did you know, we did the stock market, we did the real estate market, let's go to crypto. So, and to just bring it down to the daily. So you can see if we're going to do a little bit of technical analysis today, because why not? Uh, we haven't done too much of that yet. Uh, we are in red for a uh, HA market bias indicator. It looks a little bit like a rejection right here. Um, and that is going to reflect the other blue chip um, uh, crypto, which is, uh, of course, Ethereum. Um, and you know, man, I would say the buy of a lifetime, um, or what Benjamin Cohen says, the, uh, capitulation phase of a lifetime, whatever the best buying opportunity, in my opinion, would be if you can get back down to like 16, 17,000, um, that would be amazing. Now, keep in mind, is 27000 a terrible price when the previous high was 68000 not that long ago? Of course, anything can happen. What is crypto backed by? Crypto is backed by the idea that other people are going to buy it um, and also the technology and all that kind of stuff. Um, y y just, just going to... A monthly chart and going to the logarithmic scale this shows a wonderful wonderful beautiful just arch let's draw it here because our drawings have hit pretty well recently as you can see now something like this is probably um gonna happen or you can do um let's actually kind of go by the the top peak so we get a little bit more accurate here right so uh, we're looking at a zone somewhere a lot like that. I don't really like, let me get rid of that. I don't really like how I drew that. We're going to redraw this here. It's from the bottom since we did the top. So let's do that again real quick. So we're going to now do the, the bottom. What am I doing? Let's back this up. Let's do it one more time. Come on. There we go. Now we got it. All right. So bottom. This is obviously a very rough, rough drawing, you know, so a top, top could come up. What is a top going to hit potentially? Oh, let's see. I can't see it. So 89, 89,000 conservatively, because um, I did kind of just flatline it right here. Um, so this is a very unofficial <laughs> kind of chart just to give you an idea of 
if 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 bitcoin is going to go higher and you believe in crypto um and ethereum and all of that does 27 versus 17,000 make too much of a difference no the best thing to do if you really are a believer buy at 27,000 buy more at 17,000 if it goes below that okay now we'll start to reevaluate right um do you want to buy more or do you want to sell out of your position right so that's all i got for you today i really appreciate all the likes comments subscriptions do me a favor and just hit the like button it's the easiest way to help out the channel until then we'll see you next time thank you